Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk about the enlisted bunks on the battleship. When World War II, Korea, and Vietnam era crew members come back to visit the ship, often they're disappointed because many uh, of their living and working spaces are completely different uh, than how they would have been when they served on board. And this isn't because the museum has gone around and made massive changes to things. In a couple of instances, we've uh, deleted redundant birthing compartments to install exhibits and things like that, like the room that we're in right now. Uh, but by and large, we've left the majority of the birthing compartments intact to how they were in 1991 when the ship was decommissioned. The problem is, starting in 1975, the military transitioned out of being a draft force to an all-volunteer force. This is very much a result of the American experience in Vietnam. Uh, and that all draft or that uh, all volunteer force has continued to the present day. Now, the problem is you can draft anybody under the sun and put them in a battleship and be like, you're going to sleep on this chicken wire thing. Good luck. And what can I do? Everybody's drafted. But for a volunteer, if you had the choice, you're interested in volunteering for the military and you've got the choice between uh, going into the Air Force and sleeping in a bed on an Air Force base, the Army and sleeping in a foxhole, or the Navy and sleeping on uh, a mattress that's approximately one inch thick, which choice are you going to go with? So uh, the Navy had to make changes during this time period to continue to get the volunteers they needed to maintain the US Navy. So some of those changes include uh, installing closed circuit televisions around the ship. In fact, Battleship New Jersey got its own television studio in the 1980s when we were reactivated. Uh, they include larger lockers and allowing crew members to bring their civilian clothes on board. Prior to that, they were only allowed to bring their uh, uniforms on board and civilian clothes had to be left in lockers uh, ashore. And then you would leave the ship in your uniform, change into your clothes for liberty, you have to come back and change in the uniform before you come back to the ship. Uh, so the Navy was like, ah, that's, that's a little much. You, you can bring uniforms on board. Can't wash them in the ship's washer and dryer, but you can have them on board now at least. Uh, and they had air conditioning. Uh, and finally, they increase the comfort of sailors and the privacy slightly by changing from this old type of pipe rack to the coffin racks as they're called when you come on board today. The coffin racks are 80 inches long uh, so people always look at them like how did they fit in there? Like I'm only 72 inches tall uh, so you can fit a curator in one of these pretty easy. It was these where you had issues uh, fitting people in so whenever you come out and visit the battleship, you can see what the coffin racks are like. And those are extremely similar to contemporary beds that you would see on an active duty ship. So if you're an individual considering going into the Navy and you want to know what that experience is like, a visit to a museum ship like Battleship New Jersey uh, or some of our other sister ships that served in the 70s, 80s, and 90s is not a bad idea to get the experience. You can also uh, get this experience by spending the night on board during our overnight program. And there's a link for the overnight program in the uh, description below. So for this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the pipe racks that were on ships and uh, why they're removed. So one of the things that's great about the pipe rack is during the day when you're not sleeping, the pipe racks can be folded up like this. This makes it easier for getting under there with a swab. Uh, it gives you more room in the space in between these bunks uh, to have a group of guys sit down and uh, play a game of cards on a trash can lid or something like that. Uh, it gives you room for your free time. These uh, were often installed in ships that were overloaded with crews based on what they were originally designed to do. For example, New Jersey's designed for about 2,000 sailors. 
However, uh, she had up to 2,700 when you factor in the Admiral staffs, the extra anti-aircraft guns that are added, the more modern electronics that are added, uh, just during World War II. So within a couple of years of when she was designed and when the Navy comes up with the billets for the ship. So these, you can really cram into spaces. You can even hang them in mess decks and things like that. And then during the day when, when uh, you've got mess hours on, just fold them up out of the way. Uh, so that's the good thing about them. The bad thing about that is you've got zero privacy. Like the back's open, the side's open, the top's open, everything's open. People can see you uh, wherever you are. You can't change your clothes in privacy. You've got no alone time here if you just want to close yourself in and read a book. On uh, Battleship New Jersey, there are even curtains that you can pull across the bunks so that you are more or less uh, alone in your bunk. Uh, so living on the battleship in World War II was a very communal experience. Uh, living on board in the 1980s was more communal than nowadays, but not too much so. On board modern ships, uh, instead of having huge open birthing spaces with hundreds of sailors in them, that's an exaggeration, but around 100 sailors in some of our larger birthing spaces, uh, they, they have more staterooms, so you might only have five or six guys you're sharing a room with instead of everybody under the sun. So more and more privacy is expected from these volunteers, and so modern ships have changed their accommodations based on what you see on New Jersey. The pipe racks come in two different types, uh, and this kind of uh, chicken wire sort here is, in my opinion, the worst type. There's another sort that is canvas. Uh, if you want to see one of those, check out the cruiser Salem up in Quincy, Massachusetts. And there's probably some other museum ships that have them. Uh, but that's a canvas sheet stretched on here, and it's, it's just uh, rope that laces is on there. So if you want a looser mattress, you can loosen that rope and, and it'll hang. If you want a firmer mattress, you can tie it tighter. Uh, with this, what you get is what you have, and this is also louder. But this doesn't burn. The, the canvas can burn. Uh, so it seems like both the wire type and the canvas type are used interchangeably. I've even seen ships built at the same shipyard at around the same time rolling off with uh, one ship has wire, one ship has canvas. So I'm not entirely sure how the decision was made. It might be that the wire ones are heavier. So you see ships with huge reserves of buoyancy like the battleships getting these while smaller ships get the canvas ones, but I've seen destroyers with uh, both ways. So not sure why that is. Uh, if you want a firmer mattress on this, all you can do is ask one of the uh, carpenter's mates or they become damage control men later on uh, to cut you a piece of plywood to lay on there to put your mattress on. There, there's nothing you can do to tighten this. If you want something looser, Go join the Air Force. They, these don't change up. So that, that's um, another difference here. I will say, even though uh, the things on Battleship New Jersey during World War II are uh, primitive compared to what we have in the 80s, it was still pretty good to be a US Navy sailor versus serving in other countries. Uh, some other countries, you were still using hammocks as if it was the age of sail. And in the U.S. Navy, you're still issued hammocks. But by the time New Jersey is commissioned, everybody has their own bed. Uh, there, there probably isn't any hot racking going on on the ship, except possibly during something like a magic carpet run. Uh, although I have heard that they set up cots for sailors being transported like that rather than uh, make them hot rack. Uh, hot racking is when you have to share your bunk with another sailor. So because the crew is working 24 hours a day, when you roll out of your bed, somebody else rolls in and the bed is still hot. Uh, that's pretty uh, well known from submarines, but uh, we don't have any evidence that it happened on, on uh, battleships. I haven't heard any evidence that it ever happened on battleships. Uh, and Magic Carpet is at the end of the war when we're bringing all these service members home. Uh, oftentimes, Navy ships that were being relieved would be overloaded with army troops, marines, other people who aren't ship's company, just to get them home quickly. After four years at the front, get them out of here. Um, 
So New Jersey is still pretty well off compared to other countries' ships. For example, Battleship Yamato had air conditioning, Battleship Yamato had air conditioning and even had an elevator running up the uh, central fire control tower. So she was an extremely modern ship uh, in many regards, while New Jersey, you do not have any of those features. No elevators, very little air conditioning, primarily limited to magazines and uh, radio and radar rooms where the equipment is hot. It's to keep the equipment cool, not the sailors. Uh, so oftentimes you see pictures of U.S. Navy sailors just laying on deck in the shade where there's at least a breeze rather than sleeping in their bunks. However, if you're a Japanese sailor on Yamato, they took your uh, mattresses away because those were flammable and replaced it with shoring timbers. So you had to sleep on wooden boards instead of getting a one inch thick mattress like you do in the U.S. Navy. So depending on how you look at it, this stuff is worse than what you have on a modern ship, better than what many of your contemporary sailors for other nations would have had during World War II, even on comparably modern ships at that time. So what sort do you think is better? The only reason the Navy was able to install coffin racks in New Jersey is because the crew drops from 2000 to 1600. With these pipe racks, you can just keep adding them. Um, they're designed to be stacked about three high, but we have images of World War II where they're stacked four and five high. As you add more crew, you just reduce the space between them. And I've heard some sailors say there wasn't even enough room to roll over. I've got a 19 inch uh, shoulder length. So if the beds are 18 inches together, only a foot and a half between them, you'd have to slide out of bed, flip over and then slide back in. And that seems to be a pretty common experience throughout World War II. But uh, what do you think was better? these lighter ones that you can add more of, or the ones that give you more privacy? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so that more people find the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.